Our next lesson in Module 5 is Lesson 5.2, Writing Equations from a Table. And our goal for this lesson to, is to review how to find slope and y-intercept from a table and use those values to write the equation of the line. Now, unlike most of our other lessons, there is only going to be one video for this lesson. There is no Part A and Part B. There is only just this one video. So after this lesson, we'll begin working on the working on practice problems through your turn in ISL, and then working on homework as well. Now, similarly to Lesson 5.1, there are steps that we're going to take. Uh, in fact, the steps are very similar to the steps that we would take for Lesson 5.1, but we'll go through and take a look at each step to make sure that we have a good understanding of the process and how to solve these problems and to write equations from tables. So just like in Lesson 5.1, our first step is to find the slope from the table. Now, unlike Lesson 5.1, where we would use y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 to find slope, we're now using an easier formula, at least in my opinion, an easier formula, where we're going to be using m is equal to delta y over delta x. And in a moment, we'll take a look at some examples of this and review how we use delta y over delta x to find slope from a table. Our second step, then, requires that we find the value for the y-intercept, and there's actually two options for this. The first option will work every single time, but it's a bit more time-consuming and a bit more math. Uh, this is the method that we've been using back, going back to Lesson 5.1, so we're a bit familiar with it, but I know that we need some more practice with this method as well. What we're doing for this method is we're using the slope in any ordered pair from the table. So we have our slope value, which is one number, our x value from the table, and our y value from the table, which gives us a total of three values, slope, x, and y. We then substitute those values into our equation. Our y value goes in for y, our slope value goes in for m, and our x value goes in for x. We then solve for b to find the value for the y-intercept. And again, that'll work every time. It's a bit more time-consuming, but we can guarantee that we will get it every single time, and we actually don't even have to recall the second option. I will say that the second option is a bit easier, however. And here's the second option. Our second option for identifying the y-intercept is to simply identify the y-value from the table that pairs with x equals 0. So if you look at the x column from the table, if there is a 0 in the x column, and this is only if there is a 0, if there is no 0, you have to go with the first option. But if there is a 0 for the x column, the y value that is paired with the 0 is the value for the y-intercept. So there's no math involved. All we have to do is find that 0, and that will give us the value for the y-intercept. Much easier than, step, than our first option, but it's not always going to work because it's not, there's not always going to be a 0 in the table. So we can use either of those two options. Again, option A will work every single time. Option B is easier, however. Now, once we have identified the slope in step 1 and identified the y-intercept in step 2, we then move on to step 3, which is to substitute the values for m and b into slope-intercept form. Slope-intercept form, again, is y equals mx plus b. So we'll take the slope value that we found in step 1, substitute in for m. The b value that we found in step 2, substitute in for b, and then we have our equation. We remember to write down the y equals the x and the plus sign if necessary, uh, but we substitute values in for m and b. And that will give us our equation that represents that table. Now let's go ahead and take a look at a few examples of how we can take a table, find the slope and the y-intercept, and use that information to write the equation that represents that table. First example, we have a table here with x and y values. Our x values are negative 1, 0, 1, and 2, and our y values are negative 3, 1, 5, and 9. Our first step, if we recall from our previous page, is to identify the slope. And we remember that to identify the slope, we're going to use m is equal to delta y over delta x. Now, if you've forgotten how to do that, we'll take another look back at how to identify the values for delta y and delta x. And essentially what we need to do is we need to ask ourselves, 
what number are we going to add or subtract to get from one number to the next number? So to get from negative 1 to 0, what do we need to do? What are we going to add or what are we going to subtract? And we see that we are just going to add 1. In the same way, to get from 0 to 1, we're going to add 1 again. And finally, to get from 1 to 2, we are going to add 1 one more time. So our value for delta x is not negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. Our value for delta x is going to be actually plus 1. That's how x is changing. Remember, delta stands for change in. So x is going up by 1, so it's changing by going up by 1 each time. Now we also need to find the values, the value for delta y. So we're looking at going from negative 3 to 1. And how do we do that? We're going to add 4. And to go from 1 to 5, we're going to add 4 again. And finally, to go from 5 to 9, we'll add 4 one more time. Okay? So we have our delta y values over here. I'm sorry, our delta x values over here. And our delta y values over here. So we're going to substitute those in to our slope formula. Our value for delta y again is 4. Our value for delta x is 1. Now, when we have a denominator of 1, we do not need to keep that denominator. We don't have to write it. You can if you want to, but it is not required. So our value for slope is going to be m is equal to 4. Now, if you are going to graph this, yes, I would definitely encourage you to write this number and write the slope as a fraction. But since we're just writing the equation and we're not graphing it, you don't need to actually go ahead and write the denominator of 1. Okay? Now, we're done with our first step. We've identified the slope as having a value of 4. Now what we need to do is our second step. We need to identify the value of the y-intercept. Okay? So, a couple ways we can do this. We have two options for this. Our first option, we need our slope, and we need any of our ordered pairs. We can choose any ordered pair we want. Okay? I prefer working with positive numbers and numbers that are small. So I would probably choose this ordered pair right here. So I'm going to write all the information that I need up over here to the right. My slope is 4. My value for x equals 0. My value for y equals 1. And I'm going to take all that information and I'm going to substitute it into y equals mx plus b. So I'm replacing y with 1. I'm replacing m with 4. I'm replacing x with 0. And I'm leaving the plus b. So here's what that's going to look like. I'm going to have 1 is equal to 4 times 0 plus b. Now I need to simplify on the right side. Well, any time that I'm multiplying by 0, that will cancel out. 4 times 0 is going to equal 0. So I could write 1 is equal to 0 plus b, but that's not really necessary. If you add anything to 0, you just get whatever you added. So our value for b is going to equal 1. So now, moving on to step 3, I have my value for slope, I have my value for my y-intercept. And that is enough information for me to identify my equation. I'm going to substitute 4 in for m, so I have y equals 4x. I'm going to substitute 1 in for b, giving me the final equation, y equals 4x plus 1 as my equation to represent that table. Now, going back to step two real briefly, I did all this work here, and sometimes it's going to be even more work than that. I did all that work in order to find my value for b. I could have instead gone with my second option, okay, option two. And the reason that I could have gone with my second option is because if I look in my x column right here, I have an x value that is equal to zero. Okay, I have this x value here, that equals to 0. Whatever the y value is next to that 0, 
that's going to be the value for my y-intercept. So here's the y-value next to the value where x equals 0. So this value here must be my y-intercept. And I see that my y-intercept is 1. And over here, I have this value as 1. So if you notice that, if you notice an x value equal to 0, the number next to it, the value for y, is going to be the y-intercept. If you don't notice this, that is not the end of the world. You can still go through and do this work here and get the correct answer. But I wanted to show you that sometimes there will be a shortcut available to you. And I don't know how often you'll be able to use this on my answer w. But I wanted to show you again. 0 here under x, so the number next to that is going to be our value for the y-intercept. Okay? Let's look at another one. Our second example is a cell phone example. It says your cell phone plan allows you to choose how many minutes you want included in your plan. And we want to write an equation that represents the cost y for a given number of minutes x. So the top row, we have minutes included and we have multiples of 100. And the cost of the plan, we have different values there based on how many minutes are included in the plan. So again, we want to first identify the slope, then identify the y-intercept, and use that information to write the equation of the line. Now, uh, I'm, a, I'm out of room on this page, so I'm going to slide down so we just have the table. Um, but make sure that you write down the problem and the table as well, and then we'll go through and show how to do the work. So first thing that we want to do is we want to identify the slope. And in doing so, we have to find out how much we're going up, by, up or down by for each from one value to the next. So for the x values, we see that each, to get from one number to the next, we're adding 100 each time. Each time we, get, we add 100 to get from one value to the next. So that tells us that our value for delta x is going to be 100. But remember that just because that, that's on the top of the table, it's the denominator of the fraction. Don't lose sight of that. Now for our value for delta y, we see that to go from 14 to 20, we want to add 6. 20 to 26, we add 6. And we're going to keep adding 6s. So our value for delta y is going to be 6. So now we're going to go to our formula for slope. m is equal to delta y over delta x. We just use this formula with tables. And so we have m is equal to our value for delta y we said was 6. And our value for delta y, I'm sorry, yeah, our value for delta y is 6. And our value for delta x is going to be 100. So we have m is equal to 6 over 100, which if we can simplify our fraction, we should, giving us m is equal to 3 over 50. Not the prettiest fraction in the world, but still a fraction that we can use. We're done with our first step. We found our slope, 3 over 50. Now we need to move on to our second step where we identify the y-intercept using the formula y equals mx plus b. So we can choose any one of these five ordered pairs for the x and y values. I like to deal with smaller numbers if possible, so I'm going to use this first ordered pair here. So my, fir my first ordered pair that I'm going to use is going to be 100 comma 14. So my x value is 100. My y value is 14. My slope is 3 over 50. So I'm going to use these three values in my y-intercept y form, which is y equals mx plus b. We're running a little short on space, so I'm going to use some editing magic. So again, we start off with y equals mx plus b. I'm going to substitute 14 in for y. I'm going to substitute 3 over 50 in for m. I'm going to substitute 100 in for x, and I'm going to leave the plus b. So now I do some simplifying again on the right side. 3 over 50 times 100. Well, 3 times 100 is 300. 3 times 100 again is 300. And then divide that by 50 is going to give me 6. So I have 14 is equal to 6 plus b, and now I subtract 6 from both sides, and I get 8 
is equal to b. So now that I have my value for slope and my value for my y-intercept, I'm now ready to move on to my final step, which is to write the equation in slope-intercept form. So it's going to be y is equal to 3 over 50x plus 8. Okay, y is equal to 3 over 50x plus 8. And so if we think about what this means, if you were to get a plan where you had zero minutes each month, you would still have to pay $8. You know, if you just want to use your phone for, for data and text messaging, that kind of thing, you would pay $8 a month. Pretty good deal if you're not going to make any phone calls. What this 3 over 50 represents is the cost per each minute of phone calls that you make. Now, I, I understand that you have to buy them in multiples of 100, but the company is basically saying that each phone call costs 3 fiftieths of a dollar, which is six cents. So each phone call costs six cents a minute. Okay? So three over 50 equals six cents. So six cents per minute, or eight dollars if you're not going to get any minutes at all. All right? Now, when you go to do practice or homework on MyHRW, there will probably be problems where they give you a table and then ask you to graph that table and then write the equation. Well, that's just going back to 5.1. So make sure that um, when you're doing those types of problems, you just plot the points the way that they, the, the, for where the table gives you the values, um, and then draw the line, and then write the equation. You don't even have to use the graph if you don't want to. If you want to use the information in the table to write the equation, that is fine by me. But they do want you to graph the, graph the line as well, just to see how the graph of the line and the table connect to the equation. Any questions, write them down, and we'll go over those in class. And I hope that now we uh, have a better memory on how to find slope and y-intercept from a table, and then use those values to write the equation with a line.